Next story I wanted to talk about is about a woman named Francine Fosdick. I've had her in some of my clips before. I don't usually talk about her, but I wanted to touch on it tonight because a couple of politicians have been making the rounds on her show. I want to introduce you to the person that our politicians are going to to get publicity. Let me show you who this woman is and the types of things that she believes. This is late March 2021 when this came out. President Trump said that him and Melania took the vaccine. I, I can't stress enough that he did not and she did not. How do you know? How do you know? Do you have a source you want to reveal? Do you secretly know Donald Trump personally and he just told you? I can't imagine he would want that information out if that were true. Trump got vaccinated. So did Melania. They specifically said they did. Contradicting Donald Trump on this point is absolutely ridiculous. I, I mean, I have a, a close contact um, with him. <laughs> he did not, guys, okay? He's talking about something else. Um, I mean, it, it, he's been talking about HCQ. He took a placebo. <laughs> right, right. Come on, guys. And right, okay, placebo. And every single person that faked that they got it at, at, and the government was a placebo too. They never got the shot, uh, you know, the jab with, uh, you know, mRNA. Come on, they're not that stupid. This is so incredibly sad. So incredibly sad. And you know what makes this even more sad? This woman right here, her little partner, her little interviewee or whatever, this is Kirsten Weldon, QAnon celebrity, died of COVID last year. And this is before she got sick with it. They're sitting here mocking people who got vaccinated. Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. I don't want anybody to die. So needless to say, Francine Fosdick is a leading voice in the QAnon movement. She's a massive QAnoner, and she is very influential in that movement. She actually knows a lot of people that are pretty high up. She knows Johnny Enlow, at the very least. I don't think I've seen them together, but they know each other from my understanding. She's on stuff with Mark Taylor all the time, and we'll get to Mark Taylor in a minute. But this is who Francine Fosdick is. It's really sad stuff, man. Here's a clip of Francine Fosdick on Larry Gator's show, another QAnoner. This should give more context for the types of beliefs that Francine holds. Tom Hanks is dead. Newsflash. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Hanks is dead. This is May 12th, 2021, by the way. Joe Biden is dead. Yes. Okay. Come on. He took the the shot. Clintons are dead. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You've got clones running this country. Right. See, I got the testicular fortitude to say what needs to be said. Why? Because I'm a man of God. Amen. Yes. You have to. Truth. God, where? how do you even get your head to this point? They believe Tom Hanks is dead. They believe Biden is dead and they've been replaced with clones. How do you find yourself in this position with these beliefs? Truth you got these pumpkin pre. Well, I, I, I don't want to lose my 501c3. Oh, bitches, come so on. we have to use wisdom. Stop. Okay. You need to sit down and shut up. Yes. That's right. Oh. That's right. That's okay. Right. So exactly. Trump is surrounded by the military mm -hmm. at Mar a Lago. Okay. Now, remember, this came out May 12th, 2021. Four months or so after Biden was inaugurated. So Biden has been president for four months up to this point, okay? Trump has already been banned from Twitter and largely fallen off the face of the earth. Now, with that context in mind, listen to what Larry Gators and Francine Fosdick believe about Donald Trump and the power that he currently has. Yeah. Trump is surrounded by the military mm -hmm. at Mar-a-Lago. Yes, that's Trump right. has the nuclear codes. That's right. No, no, that's inaccurate. I think I have a good grip on the process of transferring nuclear codes to presidents and stuff, but I don't really want to go through it because it may be incorrect, and I don't want to say something incorrect inadvertently on here. But um, the nuclear codes, from my understanding, change every day. It's different every day, and you get, like, code words 
from the people who manage this stuff that they give to the president so that he will know what it is for that day and stuff like that. Trump does not have the nuclear codes anymore. Trump has the military who turned their back on Joe Biden. That's right. No. Where is all of this coming from? We're talking about clones, talking about nuclear codes and the military siding with Biden or siding with Trump. Where is all of this coming from? This is so strange. That's right. And Trump has Air Force One. No. Air Force One, by the way, isn't a single plane. It's whatever plane the president is on at that moment, from my understanding. There are like a, a number of different Air Force One planes that like fly around and do various things for the president. It's whichever one that he's on at that moment. QAnons, President Trump is still the president. So incredibly sad, dude. So incredibly sad. How did these people get to this point is my question. Check this one out. This one is from November 4th, 2020. This is the day after the election, I believe. Francine Fosdick has Mark Taylor on the show. Mark Taylor, by the way, if you're unfamiliar, is a pastor of a a reasonably big church. And he's also a deep QAnoner, deep QAnoner, deep believer, deep Trump supporter, obviously, based on the hat he's wearing, Trump 2020, and a conspiracy theorist to the core. Listen to this. Why do you think Trump calls these guys names all the time? Because you're not dealing with humans most of the time. Oh, wow. So he's saying Trump calls people like Sleepy Joe and what did he call Jeb Bush? Um, God, I can't remember any of Trump's stupid nicknames anymore. Anyway, so he's saying he calls him Sleepy Joe because he's inhabited by a demon. Okay, interesting. You're, You're dealing with entities. You're dealing with beings. Some of them aren't human, but you're dealing with beings right. that inhabit a body. You know what I mean? And it's like, this is why he has no problems doing that. You, you know what I mean? I guess he's saying he has no problem dehumanizing people because they're not human. He's okay with dehumanizing and making fun of people because they're not human, they're demons. I guess it would logically follow then that if they really weren't inhabited by demons, if these really were just people, it would be unacceptable for Trump to treat people that way. Is that right? Uh, Am I reading this correctly, uh, Mark Taylor? You had a list of pastors out there that was made headlines that was supporting Biden. They were pro-life pastors. We disagree on the pro-life or the pro-choice thing, but we're supporting Biden. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you something. Every Christian, every pastor out there that voted for Joe Biden last night, you have bought a curse upon yourself and your family your children and your children's children down to the third and fourth generation, and you need to repent. I don't care if you are pro-life. You cannot call yourself a Christian and call yourself a a Republican or or vote for Biden. You know what I mean? Or call yourself a Democrat, I mean, or whatever it is. You call yourself a Democrat and a Christian, it doesn't matter. If you voted for the dark side, that's what you did. You are implementing the dark agenda, Satan's agenda, the kingdom of darkness. You are not supporting the kingdom of God. And if you cannot see that, you have if you do not repent judgment will fall upon you i believe and your family and your children's children down to the third and fourth generation what a weird way of viewing the world the guy seems to have melded two ideologies together now it's not he doesn't identify as a christian and a republican He identifies as a Republican Christian. They've fused together into one identity. It's like they're inseparable from each other, and his beliefs in one inform his beliefs in the other. Unfortunately, those two identities are incompatible in a lot of ways. You can't really fuse them together without having real issues. For example... Jesus said, again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who's rich to enter the kingdom of God. That is a fundamentally incompatible verse with Republican ideology, with supporting Donald Trump. According to the Bible, Donald Trump isn't going to heaven, period. Trump is not going to heaven, but they view him as a messiah. They view him as the new Messiah. I'm not talking prophet. There are a bunch of prophets on earth. Mark Taylor claims to be a prophet on earth. I'm talking Messiah, replacement for Jesus level stuff at this point. It's like when these two identities fuse together, they don't fit exactly, and it leads to absurdity. 
And that is what we're watching manifest. That's what we're seeing happen. That's what we're looking at in Mark Taylor as he tries to force these two identities together, his Christianity and his republicanism. Not to mention the fact that he's got a third identity mixed in there, which is his QAnon identity. That just throws a wrench into everything. Let's follow a chain here, okay? So I, I was talking about Francine Fosdick, and there is a reason why. The reason is because she's been having a lot of politicians on her show recently, and I'm going to be talking about those politicians in a minute. But I wanted to establish her sphere of influence, who her friends are, who she talks to and works with, and the ideas and beliefs that she and her friends subscribe to. A few minutes ago, I talked about Francine Fosdick being on Larry Gator's show, remember? Tom Hanks is dead. Newsflash. <laughs> Tom Hanks is dead. That's right. Dead. Joe Biden is dead. Yes, okay? come on. He took the, the shot. Clintons are dead. They went on Larry Gator's show a while back, about last year, May of 2021, and had a little chat about Joe Biden being replaced with a clone, right? Well, check this out. This is what Larry Gators has been up to since then. Larry Gators had Roseanne Barr, Roseanne Barr on his show. This was only two months after he had Francine Fosdick on his show. Listen to this, July 16th, 2021. This is what Roseanne Barr had to say to Bishop Larry. You know what God told me? He said, I want Roseanne down yes. because I have a mission for you. I said, what yes. is it, Lord? You know right. I'll do it. If I have proved that to you by now, That's even right. if it gets me fire and trouble, you know I'll do it if you put yeah. it rightly to me. You've seen that. So right. it says, yes, Roseanne, I do. I have something I want you to do. I want you That's to tell right. people that I am mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Wait, God swears? She's delivering this message to us from God. She's telling us that God pulled her down and said, I have a mission for you. I need you to do something for me. You, Roseanne, nobody else on this planet can do this. Nobody. I've got Donald Trump in my back pocket. I've got Joe Biden. I can make him act as a mouthpiece if I want, but no, I want Roseanne Barr, the effectively failed comedian who's been removed from the public eye for being whatever it was she did. I don't even remember now. I need Roseanne Barr to deliver this message. And that message was mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I didn't know God said swears. Is that does that mean that I can swear in church then? Is that OK? If I go to a church, can I swear? Caveman Rob, the Lord told Roseanne a quote from the movie Network. Is that is that where that's from? That's hilarious. I had no idea. Yeah, I guess he did. And that quote happened to have a swear in it. That deeply surprises me. He said, that's you right. tell them, Roseanne, Angry. that's what I have to say to them right now. And if they can't that's figure right. out why, at least tune in to what? What? I'm sorry, I don't understand. What are you even talking about? I don't think that even Bishop Larry fully understands. I think he's putting on a, a laughing face because he's hoping she's going to elaborate a little bit more. See what is happening right in front of your eyes, and Roseanne right. will then explain it, as will Dr. Uh, Bishop Larry will explain yes, why. If yes. you're any kind of conservative like me, they blacklist <laughs> you. Yes. They have blacklisted me for years because I oh. wanted to talk about, you know, the things that ain't right. Okay, well, you know what? The internet exists, and we can find out exactly why Roseanne was blacklisted. I forgot what it was. I, I knew it was something racist. I didn't fully remember. But um, if this is your first time realizing that Roseanne is a QAnoner, I apologize. At least you know now. Yeah, Roseanne is a full-blown member of QAnon. Obviously, she's on a QAnoners TV show or whatever. Two months ago, Roseanne Barr was a star again. Her sitcom Roseanne returned in March after a two-decade absence to enormous ratings on ABC. Network executives are celebrating their strategy of appealing to wider swaths of the country after Donald Trump's surprising election win. And the president himself called Mrs. Barr to congratulate her on her show's large audience. But on Tuesday, all that came crashing down. ABC abruptly canceled Roseanne hours after Mrs. Barr, the show's star and co-creator, posted a racist tweet about Valerie Jarrett 
an African-American woman who was a senior advisor to Barack Obama throughout his presidency and considered one of his most influential aides. Mrs. Barr, I'm sorry, I think maybe Miss Barr, not Mrs. Miss Barr wrote, if the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals Valerie Jarrett. Wow, dude, that is beyond grotesque. Miss Barr later apologized, but it was too late. In announcing the show's cancellation, ABC's entertainment president, Channing Dungy, Channing Dungy, said in a statement that Roseanne's Twitter statement is abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. So what important issues was Roseanne talking about that got her canceled? Didn't, isn't that what she just said a minute ago? I wanted to talk about, you know, the things that ain't right. Interesting. The things that ain't right. You wanted to talk about the things that ain't right. Yeah, I would say so. What you said wasn't right. I guess that's pretty on point. It sounds to me like Roseanne is blaming other people for her mistake right now. It sounds like she's trying to pass the blame off to others. It was your fault, Roseanne, for being racist on Twitter. Your cancellation, in my eyes, was completely justified. Yes. And they don't want to hear it. They're censors, just like all the rest of them. Fascist and, and censors on the left and the right. Listen, anybody that is not going to let me speak, I... That's I'd... right. Go. Just go. Hey, Roseanne, if you don't want to be canceled, don't say racist stuff. Simple as that. That was so beyond wrong, what she said. That isn't the only instance of her saying something real messed up on Twitter, either. She has said multiple things that were beyond grotesque. That was just the one that I picked out. So that is Francine Fosdick's sphere of influence, okay? I wanted to establish that. Those are the people she knows. Those are the people she hangs out with. That's what they believe. Now let's talk about why it matters. Check this clip out. This is Francine Fosdick inviting a Supreme Court judge nominee on her podcast as a guest. This is late March 2021. I am excited that she is now running for the Supreme Court of the state of Pennsylvania. Come on now, give her a shout, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast, my dear sister, Judge Patrick. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Prophetess Francine. It's just awesome to be Prophetess Francine. She fancies herself a prophet of God. How about that? It's awesome to be here. I love you guys, and I'm so happy to have met you uh, with uh, through P Prophet Mark Taylor. You guys are tremendous, and I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to your audience. Holy mother of God. I think she met Francine Fosdick through Mark Taylor. That's the impression I'm getting. Mark Taylor is like an entirely new level of unhinged. I cannot even believe that this woman is seemingly endorsing Mark Taylor right now. That is like new levels of disturbing. It doesn't end there. It does not end there. That's not the only politician that decided to make an appearance on her show. Remember, that was late March 2021, about a year ago. That was Judge Patrick. Judge Paula Patrick, that was her name. Well, State Senator Doug Mastriano, Republican, went on her show too. I wanted to read this article about it. Article is on the PennCapitalStar.com. It's like the local newspaper in Pennsylvania, I believe. So let's read it and see what it says here. A Pennsylvania state senator and a Philadelphia judge who's running for the state's highest court are set to appear at a QAnon-branded conference in June, according to posts from a conspiracy-laden podcast. That conspiracy-laden podcast is the one that we just talked about. It's, um, my God, I just said it 15 times. Francine Fosdick, that's who. State Senator Doug Mastriano, Republican, and Judge Paula Patrick, a Republican running for state Supreme Court, are listed as speakers at the event titled Patriots Arise, Awakening the Dead. The event is hosted by Upfront in the Prophetic, a conspiratorial podcast hosted by Alan and Francine Fosdick, according to Media Matters a left-leaning nonprofit that watchdogs right-wing media. Among the categories listed on the podcast website are Q and The Storm, terms from QAnon, a conspiracy theory that falsely claims a cabal of democratic politicians, billionaires, and celebrities kidnap kids to stay young 
and only former President Donald Trump and the military can stop them. Um, I guess that sums it up pretty well. There are, there's, God, there's a lot to it. How do you sum up QAnon in like a, a single sentence? I guess that one works best, as best as any other sentence would work. Media Matters cited an archived webpage from Upfront in the Prophetic that lists Mastriano and Patrick among its June conference speakers. We the people shall take back our freedoms. Where we go one, we go all. The archive description reads, The latter is a reference to where we go one, we go all, a motto for adherence to QAnon. That, my friends, is why we talk about Francine Fosdick. She may seem like a nobody, and in many circles she is a nobody. But guess what? This woman is having full-blown politicians and Supreme Court justices on her show. She's doing shows with some incredibly influential people. That's why we have to talk about her. That's why we have to talk about these beliefs. They are spreading through society like a plague. 